LibreOffice calculator. Now let me show you what it looks like. Um, this one here. So this is what I want you to open, LibreOffice calculator. You don't need the internet today, okay? We're just going to use this program. I'm going to show you a few some things in it. And this program will be very important and very useful for your math coursework. For math coursework one. So if everybody can please open up LibreOffice. And we'll look at how to do some basic things in that. Calculator spreadsheet. Yeah. ICT. Okay, so for this, it would be best if you try and keep the numbers the same as what I use. Okay. So the first thing we'll have a look at. Problems? Jermaine! But still, take them out, it'll make me feel better. Thank you, thank you. Right, so the first thing I want to show you is how to reference a cell. So we'll just type some number into the first cell, so we'll just call it like 5. I'll make this look bigger if I can. Um, okay. I can expand. Uh, that's as big as it gets. Right, so what we want to do is um, just look at how to reference this value. That is, in another box, put in the same value. So this is just something simple to start with. Um, if I want to have the same value as what's in this box A1, I just type in equals A1 and it'll be exactly the same value. But what's nice is that when I change it, it changes as well. So this is the first thing just to do. Type uh, a number into A1 and then in another box type in equals A1. Okay. Have this? Yeah, yeah. It should only take you a few seconds. No? You have this? No, my laptop is Okay, well, that's okay. All right, so let's look at something else now. Let's uh, add to our functions. So I'll just type in, um, I'll delete this, and then just type in some numbers here. So if you can just do the same, please. Yeah, uh, it doesn't have to be, but it's helpful if you keep it the same. Problem? Problem? No? Okay, so the first thing, we'll add two numbers, and you can probably already figure out how to do that. We type in equals, and in this case it's A1 <coughs> plus B1. And let's do minus equals A2 minus B2 and in this one we'll do multiply does anyone know what to use for multiply? Dot. not dot? Dot. the star, yeah, yeah A3 star uh, B3 and then lastly divide, does anyone know what to use? the slash, yeah A4 forward slash B4. Okay, so please try and do the same for. Okay, no problems, right? This is all okay. Got that? Yeah? 
You got that? Yeah. Okay, so next what we want to do is to add up a column. So that is, we want to add up all the numbers in this column. So we have a function in Excel to do that, and the function is called sum. So I would type in equals sum bracket, and I'm going from A1 to A4. So I type in A1, A1, and then colon, A4. Oops. So this should add up to 24, and it does. So this is our sum function for adding up a column. So if you can add up the first column, please. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you can do the same with a row, so let's just check. Equals sum, and in this case it's A1 to C1. Uh, and we get 22 then. So we can add up the columns or we can add up the rows as well. So if you can do this one as well, please. So again, just to say it again, everything you're doing, this will be helpful for your maths assignment. You have this? Yes. Okay, let's move on to let's move on to sorting data. Uh, so let's say. I take these numbers here, and I want to, or, actually, yeah, let me clear everything. We'll start with some new numbers. Okay, so, let's put in some new numbers here. 5, 3, 6, 7, 1, 2. So now what I want to do is sort these numbers from smallest to largest. Highlight all the numbers. And here in data, you can pick sort ascending which will be 1 to 7, or you can pick data sort descending, which will be 7 to 1. So sometimes in maths you need to sort your numbers from smallest to biggest. I wonder if anyone knows an example where you have to sort your numbers in maths. Do you remember anything from high school where you have to put your numbers from smallest to largest? Which one? Uh, not this, something in statistics. Can anyone think of an example from high school where you need to put your numbers in order? Yeah, median. Median, yeah. Because it's the middle value, yeah. So this is also a useful operation. So I'd like you to type in the same numbers and then sort them ascending and then sort them descending. Okay, we'll clear this now. Nice. <laughs> right, and uh, so the next thing now, we'll make it a bit more complicated. We want to type in some formulas. So for example, uh, I want to do something like, I'll call this x, and I'll call this y, and I'll make x equals a 4, and maybe here, for example, y is equal to 2x, plus 1. So what I would like is to make the value 2x plus 1. I want to calculate it here. So that's equal to 2 star, and in this case the x is at a2, so that's a2 plus 1. So this will do 2 times 4 plus 1. And you see we get 9 then. Yeah? 
And if I change this to minus 4, see I get minus 7. So you can calculate y quickly for calculate next then. Yeah. So let's say I type in another number here, minus 3. And I would like this same formula in the box underneath. You can copy this formula into the box underneath. If you put your mouse right at the corner of the box until it turns into this cross. So watch, you just put it right at the corner until it becomes a cross. And then you can drag it down to the next box. And you've copied the formula down. So you see they move the formula down. In the next box it's now 2 times a3 plus 1. I can copy it down again. And I can put another number here like minus 2. So try and type in this formula and copy it down, please. Uh, copy it down two more times using these two values for x. Has everybody done this? Yeah? Okay. So what I want to do is make a list of the numbers of x from minus 4 to say plus 4 or whatever. So this next number should equal 1 plus this last number here which is a4. So what I've done is I've changed this into a formula. It's 1 plus the last number. So when I copy this down, it copies the formula down, and it'll also be 1 plus the last number, and so on. So I could go down to 4 here. And likewise, I can copy this down. So now I have formulas in the box. I can go as far as I like, so I can copy as many as I want. It can make an X table and a Y table. Whoops. So I want you to try um, try and do the same idea, but do it for uh, let's do it for a different function, so you can start from the beginning. So what I want you to do is to start at minus 10 and go all the way to plus 10. That's where I want you to stop, and I want you to do it for this function y equals 2x, uh, 3x minus 2, starting at minus 10 and finishing at plus 10. I want you to make this table. See how you can do for this one.
let's have a look at this one now. Listen up. Listen. Listen. So, I saw some people got it, but some people didn't get it. So, please watch carefully. So, the first thing I have is minus 10. And then in the next box, I type in equals 1 plus a2. So, this will add 1 to the last box. So, here will be minus 9. Here, we want to type in the formula equals 3 times a2 minus 2. Uh, yeah. So I get minus 32. And I can copy this down. So now I can just copy these two as much as I want. So I'll go all the way to plus 10. So that would be around about... Did I get that right? It's stuck. There we go. One more should do it. So you should have this table of numbers. Did you get this, Bill? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now I want to show... I want to show you how to square and square root and then we'll have a look at a quadratic then. So let me just clear all of this again. So let's just do square and square root. For example, if I want 3 squared, I would type in 3 and this is the power symbol. I think it's on, for my keyboard, it's on the number 6. Um, is it on number 6 for your keyboard as well? Yeah. So this will be 3 power 2. So that's 9. And then if I want square root, I type in equals S Q R T bracket, let's say, 9. So this would equal 3 then. So if you can just square a number and square root a number for practice, okay? For power, uh, square root, S Q R T. Got this? Yeah. Okay, have you done that? Yeah? Okay, great. Listen, listen. So, now um, let's make a table. Let's just do something small like 0 to 5. So here's X. I'll start at 0, and then we'll add 1 each time, so 1 plus the last value, and we'll go to 5, or, or to 6, yeah. Now this time is a little bit different. Guys, listen, Jermaine, listen, listen. So this time I'll type in a uh, form the mx plus c, and I'm going to put the m and the c somewhere different. So I will say the M is 2 and the C is 3. So here, if I type in equals M, you can see the M is over here at D2, so I type in D2, times X, and where would the X be? Oh, A2, yeah. And plus C, and where's the C? E2. Now it works for the first one, but there's a problem, it doesn't work for the other ones. So I wonder if anybody has any ideas why do you think it's not working. So why did it work for the first one, but it doesn't work for these ones? Yeah, there's no M's and C's copied down here as well. These M's and C's are blank. Because remember, when you copy the formula down, look, everything moves down. Do you see that? It goes 2, 2, 2, and then when I move down, they all get changed, and they all get changed. So we need to tell Excel that the M and the C don't change them. They're staying in the same place. So I'll show you how to type that in. Let's start it again. So the way we do it is we type well, equals. And because the M is not changing, it stays fixed, you type in like this. Dollar 
$50.2. And this is telling Excel, don't change this value, keep it fixed. Times, the X is in A2, and then the C is in E2. But again, we don't want Excel to move this, so we type in $E$2 as well. Now, when I copy it down, only the X changes and the M and the C stays the same. So you can change your formula and have everything change at once. So it's quite convenient. Um, so if you can do the same thing, please. There's the formula I used. The dollar sign keeps the M and the C fixed. So I want you to go from 0 to 6, and I want you to use uh, 2 and 3 for M. Let me just move this over a bit more. Okay. Okay, is that done? Or having trouble? Yeah. It's okay. Okay, yeah. Let's do another one. This time Let's do uh, a quadratic. So for a quadratic, let me clear all of this. We need to have an A, a B and a C. So we'll just say 1, 1 and 1 to start with for A, B and C. Uh, right, so a uh, quadratic. What would I need to have first? It starts off with AX squared plus BX and then plus C. So what would be the first thing I need to type here if I want the quadratic? What do I need first? If I want to type in quadratic, I would need to be dollar sign D dollar sign 2 because the A is not changing. Then what comes in next? A2 power 2 plus dollar sign E dollar sign 2 times A2 again because that's the X and finally the C dollar sign F dollar sign 2. And let's copy this down. Okay, try and make the same. You have this? So you made a mistake. So what's the mistake?
No, it might be okay. Yeah, I'll just leave it like this. Okay, let's have a look at the cubic now. I think I said for the x to go from 0 to 10. So I'll do that first. So there's 0 to 10. And now let's type in the y. Um, so in the formula, what was the first part? x cubed, was it? Let's have a look. X cubed, yeah. So equals A2 power 3. What was next? 9. 9. 9. A2 squared. Oh no, I forgot my multiply, sorry. So star. Yeah. Okay, and what was the next part? 22. 23 times a2 and minus 15. Great, okay. So this is my cubic and the first value when x is 0 is minus 15. If I copy this down, I get all the different values for y. 
Now, in this table I've just made, which are the interesting or important values? Of my results, I mean. Which results are interesting? The zeros, yeah, because when it's zero, what does that mean? Crosses the x-axis, and what is this called? A solution or a root. So what I want to show you next is I want to show you how to put a message here, and I want the message to say root if it's zero, and not a root if it's not zero. So we are going to use something called uh, the if function. So the way the if function works is it will do something if something is true and then it will do something else if it's false. So it's two possibilities. So please watch carefully on how I use the if function. So the way you type in if function equals if bracket and then the first thing you type in is the condition, what you want to check. So we want to check if B2 equals zero. So I type in B2 equals zero. So we're checking if B2 equals zero. Then we type a comma. So what we type next is what we want to do if it's true. So if B2 is equal to zero, then in quotation marks I'll type we have a root. Then I type another comma and I finish by putting in what to do if it's not true. So in this case I'll just put another message in quotation marks, not a root. Quotation mark to close and bracket to close as well. So is B2 equal to zero? If yes, give us this message. If no, give us this message. So this should say not a root, and it does. When I copy it down, it should say we have a root. And then all the way down, we can see where we have a root, have a root, have a root. Okay. Try to do this as well, please. Um, yeah? I type the formula in here in C2. Got that, yeah? Yeah. Not working? You have it like this? Type in. Oh, you want to see the formula here? <coughs> yes. Ah, here. You always start with equals. Now, huh? Oh, sorry, sorry, no, sorry. Forget, forget me. Uh, right, equals a fifty three. A fifty three. Yeah. Minus nine. Oh, here. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Have you done that? Yeah.
Okay, listen, 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 there's just two more functions I want to show you. So, I hope that you can see so far that what we're doing in Excel in LibreOffice Calculator, these are all useful things for math. Like for example, I think everybody here has done the lesson on solving cubic equations. So you know that the first step into solving a cubic equation is to find a root and you have to find the root by trying different values. So if you have some process like this, you can see um, you can automatically find the root. Now listen guys, listen please for a moment. So if you have some process like this, you can automatically find the root. And then what you could do next even, is you could have it so that you just change the A, the B, the C and the D in the formula. So for example, if you have two cubic equations, you can just type in the A, B, C, and D twice and get the two different answers. So in other words, I'm trying to show you ways to um, use Excel to speed up your calculations that you're doing. Yeah. Um, have you done, let me just delete all this. Have you all done arithmetic progression yet in sequence and series? Not yet, okay. So, you know, arithmetic progression is when you add the same number each time. So like, for example, here, if I start at five, and then I could add two each time. So I'd have seven, and I could go all the way up here to 23, and then I can very quickly add up all the numbers. So what I'm trying to show you is in a few seconds you could do something like add up the first 10 numbers in a sequence, as an example. Uh, but anyway, the two functions I want to show you next, uh, let me just type in some values. Uh, if you can type these in, please, 0 0.2, um, uh, well then let's make it 2 and um, 3 and 4 and 5, ok. So beside them I want to put in the square root, so that equals square root A1 Have you done that? Yeah. Ah man, have you done this? And then next one will be square root 3, square root 4, and then square root 5. So what I want to show you now is how to round off the function. So for example, I want this answer to, let's say, one decimal place. So we type in to round equals round bracket. And then the number we want to round, in this case it's b1, comma, and then how many decimal places? So I said one decimal place, so I press one and bracket. So this should make 1.4. Let's round this one to two decimal places. Equals round B2, comma, 2. So I should get 1.73. What would happen if I round the next one, B3, to three decimal places? What will I get? Yeah, it'll still just say 2, actually, or 2.00. And lastly, let's round the last one to four decimal places, B4, comma, or let's say six decimal places, make it different. Actually, 
What if I said zero decimal places? What would it become? No decimal places? It would become two. two. Yeah. And if I said six decimal places, I'd get this. So this is how I can round off them. So can you just practice with one or two of them? Just make sure you can round off, please. C1? Okay, guys, listen, listen, listen. So the very last thing I want to show you, um, it's useful for when you want to make numbers positive. So, for example, I'll just type in some positive numbers. Well, let me start by some negative numbers. Minus 2, minus 3, 5, and 9. So I want to use a function that changes the number to a positive, And this function is called absolute, or in this program it's ABS for short. So ABS bracket A1. So it will make it positive. This becomes 2. ABS A2, for example, this would become 3. Um, and what about the next one? What will this be? 5 and 9. So this function is useful for when you want to make the number positive always. It's called absolute, ABS function. No problem, just stick a minus in front of ABS and now they'll all be minus then. Okay, 